this is Star Wars Chick. We're at Comic Con 2012. We're here in the Profiles in History booth, and I'm here with Doug Dreyer of the Dreyer Collection. And Doug, for those that, uh, that are watching, give them a little overview of what the Dreyer Collection actually is. The Dreyer Collection is really my family's uh, collection of, of props and costumes from movies we grew up watching. And so we, we really tried to focus on uh, films that everybody knew and from those films we went with props and costumes everybody would recognize and if you want to use that as iconic that you could do that but we wanted people to come through our collection and, and to know everything. There, there wouldn't be a, a prop that would be that would require a lot more description. It were things that uh, you'd walk in and you'd see this and instantly you'd know what it was. You'd see a crystal, you'd know instantly that it's kryptonite. We went for things that would bring back memories of people and, and, and pop culture icons. I get goosebumps thinking about that, <laughs> especially with Superman behind us. Um, so when did your family originally get into collecting? The, uh, the collecting bug goes back to my dad and he really grew up collecting baseball cards. Uh, and so uh, a large part of our collection really was sports and, and that's been going off through another auction house. Um, but I would say about 10 years ago, I moved back to California and we really just started getting into uh, other things that we thought were iconic. We, we were doing so many flat things, cards, and I wanted three dimensional stuff mm -hmm. because I thought that would be great for walls. Um, and so I remember uh, going back to profiles early on and getting a Hopalong Cassidy hat. I think mm -hmm. it was one of the first things we bought from them. A Stargate jacket, which was one of my favorite films. And, and, and it really snowballed from there. We, <laughs> we sort of got the bug and, and, and picked up other collections and, and people really responded well to it. People came in and it's one thing to hold a baseball card and go, oh wow, that's great. But when you walk in and see a custom mannequin on a, with the Christopher Reeve Superman costume, it's overwhelming. It's beautiful stuff. And then to just watch people think back about seeing those movies and, and the memories they brought. That was a lot of fun for us. So it sort of became addictive to, to build these collections. Now, what's here is just like a grain of a, sand. A, a grain <laughs> of sand. You know, much like an iceberg, uh, you're only seeing a very small part of the, the actual thing. We were, uh, coming from the sports world, we were completist. We mm -hmm. really liked having whole sets. And so if it was something that had a costume, we'd want advertising. We'd want premiums. We'd want toys that match that because that, in our opinion, gave a whole view of uh, how wide-ranging something was. Superman, where you, it, everybody knew it, and, and the more stuff that went with it, the bigger of an item it was. Everybody knows the costume. Everybody knows so many things we got, and, and we could really show that through artwork, through uh, posters, through toys, through serial premiums, all that stuff to help build what we thought was a complete collection. Now, the biggest question in my mind, and I'm sure for, for you know most of the people that are in this kind of a hobby, why would you sell all of these? Well, you know, and, and we get that question a lot. And we were at a point, we had this beautiful facility uh, that we did a lot of charity, a lot of corporate events. And we were getting to a point where it was becoming really popular and really big. We were at 20 to 30 events a year that were larger than 75 people and maybe the same number of, of smaller groups plus tours plus you know friends coming by it got to a point where it was becoming too much I just had my third child a little eight month old now um, my father retired my mom and he want to travel my mm -hmm. wife is European she's Danish and we want to spend a lot more time in Europe and we just said now is the time to, to, to do it you know we've come conquered Everest, we've climbed to the top, and now we're, we're ready to go down and, and do new things. We're still collectors. We still have a beautiful book collection. We have a beautiful gems and minerals collection. So we're not getting out of the concept. We're really just trying to simplify our lives. And, and it's been, it's, it's worked out really well for us. Are there any pieces that personally you guys are going to hold on to because they have sentimental you know, uh, connection? There were gifts. You know, we, we, we were fortunate to have plenty of actors, plenty of producers, directors, friends come through the, the collection. Anything that was donated in that way stayed with us. Now that, that was personal. Um, we, we made the decision early on that if we were going to sell a collection, 
we had to sell the collection. We mm -hmm. couldn't start cherry picking the pieces we loved so much because inevitably, in, invariably, if they were the pieces that were iconic or, you know, if they were something that, that would be great on a desk, but they wouldn't work without everything there. So other than personal items, we really decided that if it's going to go, it's going to go. We're going to let it go. And, and we felt very good about it. We had a great edge strategy and we're doing it on our terms. And so it's That's made nice. it a lot easier. So no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets. You know, every time I look at my pictures uh, and see my kids and go out to dinner on a, on a weekend and, and, and just go to see things on Saturday, go to the zoo, it, it's worth every, every, every minute of it. Now, uh, for, again, for those of us that, you know, are kind of doing the same thing and, and collecting movie props and, and memorabilia, how did you guys acquire a lot of the pieces that are in you the know, collection? You know, a lot of it came through profiles. A lot of it came through uh, other dealers. It came through private deals. It came through um, people we know in the hobby. It came from people in the industries. Uh, a lot like our sports collections, you know, we, we were fortunate to make wonderful connections. And so through that, we were able to acquire amazing items that I, I think are extremely recognizable to a wide ranging uh, group of people. What is your favorite piece in the collection? That is a tough question. <laughs> I think, I remember when I was giving tours, one of the favorite things I really liked to do was walk into Superman, actually. Uh -huh. And this is a piece that drew people into sure. a room. You see it in the corner, you walked in, and you, then you'd look around and you'd see the action comics, and you'd see a lot of the other things. But the jor costume was absolutely a blast because you it was interactive. It required a little bit of story, and it required a little bit of work. You would go in, you'd say, okay, turn off the lights, get uh. your camera out, <laughs> take a picture and they would take it and then that costume would glow and people would just oh wow and even here at, at Comic Con I'm telling you take a picture with your flash it's worth it and you just you see people click it and go whoa did you see that to me getting that kind of reaction was always the most fun part of tours seeing people make these amazing connections of all and wonder and memory. That was worth it. That was a blast. We had a good time with that. Cool. I have one last question. Yes. Can I touch Superman? Yeah, maybe right there. Right on there? The leg. Yeah. yeah. I touched Superman. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Absolute I appreciate pleasure. it. I really appreciate it. Thank you.